given by uh, Mary Alice Richardson. Are we doing yeah. table topics? Yeah. 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 About table topics. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. We had table topics, and um, table topics minister is Leslie Coronash. So, Leslie, welcome. Um, Rob, how much time do we have? We have until 12.42, which okay. is approximately three to four minutes. So we'll have time for one or two speakers. Okay. Um, Rich, I think you may be the only person without a role. So I'm going to ask if you would talk about uh, times when you have been challenged to try to be ethical and responsible as a realtor and as a person. I will preface this by saying I have a very good friend who almost bought a condo in Watertown, gorgeous space. The realtor for the seller, who also lived in the building, was the owner, called her and said, I know I'm not supposed to do this and you never heard this from me, but the guy who's selling is a real wretch. Uh, and so, so my friend decided wretch. not to buy the unit. Now that is a violation of the realtor's code of honor. On the other hand, there's the women's code of honor. And she felt more loyal to the women's code of honor in this case than the realtor. But I'd like you to talk about any time when you've been really caught between being ethical as a realtor and a person. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. I just finished a course uh, as, a as, a, as a realtor, and there's a distinction between being a real estate agent and a realtor. When you're a member of the Greater Boston uh, Board of uh, Real Estate, you, ha uh, you have to take certain classes and be a realtor to be a realtor, and you get a professional designation. But I kind of like that first thing that was up here about integrity, and integrity is doing the right thing when no one's looking, which you kind of alluded to. And somebody gave me, the best piece of advice somebody ever gave me was they said, when you're doing an open house and people are asking you about the house, make believe that the person that the house that you're selling is standing in the room so that you don't say something that would be uh, inappropriate and not in the seller's best interest. But to answer your question about uh, things that go wrong, sometimes you can innocently um, make a mistake, which I did one time. I remember there was a, a client, and there are certain cultures where it's very important that they want to know whether, uh, if it's an estate sale, whether the person died in the home or not. And I innocently said, well, gee, I'm sure I would have been told if they did or not. And I said, uh, I'm sure that they died in a nursing home, and only to find out later that the person did die in the home, and then I had to disclose that. And it was kind of embarrassing for me, and the lesson I learned from it was, unless you know, what I really should have said is, I don't know, but let me check and I'll get back to you. But I, rather than just, I felt like I had to have an answer at the time or otherwise I'd look stupid. And, and I actually ended up looking stupid by giving an answer I didn't know. But that was not an era of, uh, of intent. That was kind of just ignorance, out of ignorance. So integrity is very important. So that's, again, I'll use myself as an example of integrity. But I meant well, but I didn't, I didn't do the right thing at the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're out of time for table now. Oh, okay. Hey, good to see you. Happy New Year. Um, okay. Uh, now we come to uh, uh, speech evaluation for the first speaker, uh, 